So you guys already know that majority of my watches are from Daniel Wellington. A few years ago, Daniel Wellington watches were everywhere. But I barely see these watches anymore, and it feels like the phenomenon of Daniel Wellington has died. And for many of you watching this video, if you're a watch lover, you'll think that's a good thing. And maybe it is, but I want to know why. Why did these watches disappear? Why do watch collectors hate Daniel Wellington so much? And how on earth did these become so popular? A watch of superlative quality and true investment value. One of the worst watches to buy <laughs> on the market today. This is a Daniel Wellington. I don't know what model it is, but it's my stepdaughter's watch. It's not a luxury watch. It's nothing to write home about. But in 2016 and 2017, these were everywhere. And guys, I wanted one of these <laughs> so bad. So I was fresh out of university. I had no money. And where I lived in Vancouver, these, these were so stylish. This Swedish minimal fashion and design was on the rise. But to get this glowing beacon of style, fashion, and horological accomplishment. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> but to get this watch was $200. And I was fresh out of university. I didn't have that kind of money. I was driving a car from the 1990s. <laughs> but I wanted one so bad. I honestly, I thought these were so cool. <laughs> And it should be known at this time in my life, I wasn't really into watches. I couldn't name any watch brands beyond Rolex, Teg Heuer, and Daniel Wellington. And of those three brands, I wanted a Daniel Wellington. If you're a Gen Z watching this, it's kind of hard to explain how big Daniel Wellington was. So if you don't know much about Daniel Wellington, they are a Swedish watch brand founded in 2011 by Philip Tysander. In February 2017, Daniel Wellington was named the fastest growing company in Europe. Not the fastest growing watch brand in Europe, not the fastest growing company in Sweden, the fastest growing company in all of Europe. And it was a title that was well deserved. In 2014 2015, Daniel Wellington sold around $500 worth of watches, and by 2017, they sold over $200 million worth of watches. They were selling over a million watches. That is more watches than Rolex. That is more watches than Omega and Cartier combined. And within just five years, Daniel Wellington became a really big player in the watch game. So how did he do it? Two words, influencer marketing. The 2010s were a time of experimentation online. Platforms like Instagram were hitting their peak. Sandy beaches, young pretty people, the age of the influencer had begun. Millennial shit. And when we're looking back to the 2010s, we need to remember a lot of this technology, all of this marketing was still really new. This was the new emerging tech and smart, forward-thinking companies like Daniel Wellington knew how to make influencer marketing work for them. Who cares if the product is cheap? Put it on a hot girl and Philip Tysander could sell his quartz Chinese watches no problem. Now in 2022, we all already know how this works, but Philip Tysander was a pioneer of his time. He was one of the first adapters to influencer marketing. The goal is simple. Rather than paying superstars like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt a ton of money to market your watch, he could have the exact same impact and result by targeting this emerging world of the influencer. And it worked. Boy, <laughs> did it work. They weren't just selling online anymore. They were physically opening up shops, stores, concessions, boutiques were all opening up around the world. London, Stockholm, Sydney, India. Things were looking nothing but up for the horological powerhouse. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny. They're a well-respected watch brand. But it really seemed like things were going somewhere. So what happened? What happened right here, right between 2018 and 2019? 
That is a steep and sudden drop. Now, I'm not an expert, but if I was a betting woman, I would say the biggest factor in the decline of the fashion watch was the Apple Watch. Here it is. Oh my, it's so beautiful. As they grow in power and influence, tech companies like Apple and Garmin are battling for a small piece of real estate on your wrist. Smartwatches have irreversibly changed the landscape of wrist watches, and while Swiss luxury watches have thrived during this new era, marketing themselves as traditional and artisan luxury goods, analog craftsmanship in a digital era, fashion watches haven't fared so well. It is in the year that Apple Watch nearly doubled its sales from the previous year, so between 2017 and 2018, that we see fashion watches, brands like Daniel Wellington, absolutely plummet. Apple makes more watches than every other brand combined. That smartwatch purchase certainly does cannibalize that, that fashion watch purchase. So if you're a consumer standing in a, in a busy department store watch department, it's almost like being in a casino where you, there's sensory overload, there's, there's shiny little objects everywhere, and those fashion watches are competing for those smartwatch dollars and, and they're just not winning the fight. Now this isn't to say Swiss watches haven't been affected by the rise of Apple Watch. In 2019 alone, Apple Watch outsold the entire Swiss watch industry. Every single Swiss watch brand combined. Apple sold more units, selling 30.7 million watches. With that said, the value of Swiss watch imports held strong because, well, mechanical watches are expensive luxury goods. But back to the topic at hand, what happened to Daniel Wellington? Honestly, I think it was a cocktail of things. It was the rise of Apple Watch, but it wasn't just Apple Watch alone. It was the low build quality, the downfall and slow distrust of influencer marketing, and the sheer lack of value that led to their demise. People began seeing these watches for what they truly are, disposable, unoriginal pieces of landfill. Is that too harsh? I feel like it might be. Why would I spend 200 pound on this disposable mass-produced Chinese watch that only tells me the time when I could put that money towards an Apple watch or a smart watch that tells me the time, keeps track of my fitness, and are the in vogue thing to wear at the moment? That's another aspect as well. As the times changed, the style also changed, and Daniel Wellington has just kind of become not cool anymore. It kind of grew stale and played out. In my opinion, the Apple Watch marked the end of the fashion watch, or maybe they've become the new fashion watch. If I may offer a forecast, that might be a little bit controversial, but I think the Apple Watch will meet the same fate as the fashion watch. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next year, but in a decade? Yeah, I, I could totally see that happening. <laughs> At one time, Daniel Wellington seemed unstoppable. Fashion trends, they come and they go. But disposable crap just truly never stands the test of time. I've said it once and I'll say it again and I'll say it a million times more. Mechanical watches are the meeting place of art, engineering, fashion, and history. They are lifetime items that stand the test of time. But anyways, guys, these are just some of my thoughts. I really just wanted to talk about this prominent watch brand um, that kind of just fell off the face of the earth. And whether you love them or hate them, Daniel Wellington will kind of always have a place in watch history. But as always, these are just some of my thoughts. I would love to hear some of yours. Do you love them? Do you hate them? What do you think the future is of connected watches? What do you think is going to happen? Let us know in those comments down below. And as always, don't forget to do all that YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. All that juicy stuff. And until next time. Bye. And I should have said this at the start of the video. But I wanted to give the biggest thank you ever to Vu Bui. My friend who lives in Stockholm. He went to, for me, he went to the flagship Daniel Wellington store in Stockholm just to take some of the videos that you saw in this video.
So thank you so much, Boo. I know it was probably one of the hardest things you ever had to do in your life, and it was very humiliating. And he made a whole fake backstory as to why he was there. <laughs> but thank you, Boo. Honestly, these little B-rolls made the video so much better, so thank you so much. And now I'm gonna thank my patrons as well, the gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful Pope Tier patrons who patrons who make this channel possible. Thank you so much, guys. And if you want to support me with money, I won't stop you. 